is Ashley Eckstein, voice of Ahsoka Tano, and thank you for listening to the Super Awesome Geek Show. Hey, hey, guys, it's John here, and today we've got a special guest with us. Well, first I'll introduce our panel. We have Chip with us again today. Hello, Chip. Hey, guys, what's going on? How you doing? Berlin. Rum is here with us. Hey, hey, Rum. Hey, John. <laughs> and Bazara. You just hey. let anybody on this show, won't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and today we have our special guest. It is Jake Adams. Jake, Hello. What's going on? Hey, world? Jake. We'll put Jake, Jake in the middle. Jake yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it so uh, monkey lizard in the middle? Jake the snake. Okay. I don't mind being in the middle. It's a good spot. It's a nice... Especially, I love being next to this strange creature and the John. lovely. Yeah, John. Yeah, John. yeah, John. Yeah, definitely. John is pretty strange. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's <laughs> Good bookends here. Good bookends. Yeah. Yeah. That filling yeah. of a salacious and John sandwich. That's a scary. Oh boy. Scrumptious, scrumptious. Tasty. So today we've got a little bit different of a comic show for you than our usual going through our pickups and talking about the weekly comics. Today we've got something special. We've got Jake here to tell us about some holographic comics, cutting edge technology in the comic book world, in the comic book industry. And uh, Jake is at the forefront of this uh, cutting edge new technology, new format for comic books. And um, it's it's my hope after reading what you had and looking at what I've looked at so far that this holographic universe in comics picks up and more and more companies get on board and do stuff like this. Because I think it's a it's a really cool idea and a way to push the medium even further in the digital realm. Oh, yeah. What do you think about all that, Jack? Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean it's yeah. Uh, I mean at least I hope so. I think eventually <laughs> it'll probably be. Eventually, it'll probably get on a, a little bit more mainstream. It's it's actually since the last time I talked to you, um, it's definitely grown a bit, which is great. And the the tech has gotten better, and things have just they're a lot more crisp in the display itself. A lot of the interactivity is a little bit more standalone, if you will, uh, without being plugged in uh, to a computer or desktop. Uh, to, there's a little bit of a limitation there, but for the most part, and it's, yeah, I mean, it's definitely evolving. And yeah, like you, I, I definitely want some, some, more, uh, some more evolution on, on that side of things for sure. Yeah. Cause, uh, cause what you've actually got right now is a stand, an, an actual device, oh. in order to read it in its full holographic format, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Of uh, what they call the, it's called the looking glass device, right? Yep. Yeah. Essentially, there are we do have a uh, um, something called blocks, uh, which you can actually access uh, via. Uh, Actually, they should be able to access it if they click on those interactive GIFs that are in that article there um, that you'll probably show a little later. Yeah. But yeah. The, the, uh, uh, and that can be, it's more like a volumetric presentation of each page. So you can actually you know, mess around with that on your phone, your computer, et cetera, without the display. But the interactivity really comes from the application I made. And that that's like, where where the the special sauce uh is you know that's where all the yeah. magic is <laughs> yeah yeah. Oh, yeah that's so what so i was so trying so to i was trying to tell the guys there's a because there's also a youtube video up where you can sort of go through the comic sure. but it's got to be cool. it's got to look more three-dimensional and holographic if you actually have the device oh yeah it's like yeah. it's a whole the real magic is in person which yeah, you know, and, and I'd like to take it out to little conventions or what have you. I think that'd be great at some point. Yeah, um, I, I, I have, I've, I've done demos with other, other uh, sort of like game jam type conferences and all that, but I haven't done uh, any comic book conventions yet with yeah. it. And honestly, it would be a good excuse just to travel around <laughs> and uh, you maybe gotta at least go to the next Rochester one. There's, there's yeah, yeah, Rochester exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. But uh, 
But uh, yeah, get yourself to San Diego Comic Con and you'll explode. Oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Let's so how long have you how long were you actually working on this uh how long have you been working on this oh my god this this thing took me it was first and foremost it was commissioned by looking glass uh, they used to go by the name looking glass factory but they changed to looking glass i think it was it's a smart rebrand uh nice and simple. um but yeah the uh uh they commissioned it like uh, over two years ago and I think I was supposed to give it back to them like in like three or four months. And <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just wanted to perfect it. And yeah, they're like, yeah, just do your thing when it's done. It's done. So, yeah. Um, Cause what we're seeing is, well, they liked it, I guess. And they said, it's fine if you just keep going at it. Yep. Now it's looking gas, a company that actually makes just the, that I will for all intents and purposes, it's the tablet. Yeah, or, looking or, looking what glass. Else do they do? Looking glass makes the display. They are, uh, in many ways, kind of redefining the term digital holography because, in a sense, what I'm doing isn't actually holography. It's light field, volumetric. You know, um, it's kind of a blend of many things. So, mm -hmm. and their their main goal is to sort of, uh, you know be the the harbinger if you will of holography as as we want to know it um mm -hmm. one step at a time and this step in particular with with this this the portrait display and and their their other new displays have definitely definitely have taken them um in that direction so they focus on holography and uh light field and all that and that that's pretty much it i mean they they're really honed in on hardware uh, and software, but uh, yeah, they sort of rely on content creators like myself to make make the goodies, if you will. Oh, Very look cool. who's here! Cool. Hello. Yeah, we got uh, we got Rebuff, we got Rolando, we got Peaky, we got Vader's girl, Samantha. Hello, good to see you, Sam. Hello, Sam. <laughs> and uh, Dragon Buddies here. TV. Look at all these beautiful people. AFID is awesome. Lunar John, Girl. Uh, John, whilst we were talking about Looking Glass, can I ask a question about that, please? You you ask away. Yeah, Go yeah. ahead. So, uh, Jake the Snake. Um, yes. I was looking on the Looking Glass website at yeah. the Looking Glass portrait devices. Yes. Very interesting. Very interesting. Now is now a good time to purchase one of those. I see they reduced down to two hundred ninety nine dollars. Or would you say that the technology is quite nascent at the moment? It's better off waiting for a, for a new upgraded one. Because I know how quickly these things turn around. Um, yeah, they do. They do. Have, yeah, I, I understand that. Uh, this one in particular, um, there. Are, I'm sure there are some some new things coming down the line here. Uh, but, you know, some of which I can talk about, some of which I can't. So we'll just leave that one alone. Um, but the, the, uh, the, the current, I, I would still buy this one. This is, this is definitely a major upgrade. If, if you're going to go and let's say develop for it, uh, you'll probably want to make sure you have the proper PC or Mac that can run it. Uh, if you're going to just play around with it, but you want to run my application, you know, you'll probably also want to have at least some kind of decent graphics card uh, in your in your PC or or, or Mac. Uh, be careful with the M2s, though, and the M1s. There's some compatibility things going on there, but I think that's just on the developer side, so you should be good. Uh, yeah, uh, mainly the uh, just just make sure you got good hardware that can run good, decent graphics card. You're probably fine. But yeah, I would recommend getting. It. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, so it looks like a, yeah. it looks it looks like it's around the size of an iPad. Is it about that size? Or yeah, I would say yeah, I would say it's about uh, yeah, it's about yeah, it's probably a little smaller, but it it's pretty much around that size. Yeah. But it plugs into your PC, so it's not like it hasn't got its own UI, its own operating system. No, right? it can. It has standalone as well. It has a little Raspberry Pi in it, oh, uh, yeah. and it can actually 
uh, mm. just kind of do a nice, a nice demo reel of still imagery, still volumetric imagery. Um, and that's, you know, that can be like my, my blocks as they call them, uh, which is basically the still depth imagery that you could have on your looking glass that can be ran through the looking glass display. So you may not have the interactive app. Um, well, you can get that as well um, at my itch.io link because um, it is published. But the as far as viewing those still images, you could theoretically upload those blocks into the Raspberry Pi um, very easily. And then, yeah, you just have a nice little demo reel of the Hollow comic. Did you mean to say the Raspberry Pi that was made and that was designed in Cambridge in England, God, the motherland? Yeah, but who made the actual Raspberry Pi that you can eat? I mean, where did that come from? That's that's what I want to know. Because that's Robert, the Pilgrim Fathers that were from England. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to eat that right now. I'm very yeah. hungry. So, uh, Jake, we have a question from our, our our esteemed audience here. Yes. How do you own AFID in your home? Is that oh. a comic book? AFID so cool? through the looking glass, uh, the comic book. can um, Basically, you would go to itch.io slash Valhalla, uh, and you should be able to I believe John has the link. I believe I sent you that link. It's um, in the uh, description below, yes. Amazing. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's where the application... Uh, you can also get it through the website if you go to the Hollow Comics section, um, the Valhalla website. But yeah, the uh, yeah you can get it through there. Yeah, that's cool. So this actually might be a good time to, because um, a lot of people are probably wondering what we're wondering exactly we're talking. Yeah, what in the yeah, world? There's yeah, a yeah, yeah. So let's yeah. bring up. Let's bring it? up this. Uh, so there was a really great article that they've done about you now i want to make sure that's coming up here right we got that that's good we all right it. we got it we got it nice and clean. so take us through this a little bit here jake so basically yeah they've done this article this is on what do they call themselves 80 80 level 80 um, level yeah, yeah 80 level is uh is a, a fairly just in a 3d arts community and in the sort of technical artist community as well, mm -hmm. 80 level is extremely well known. Uh, and they're, they are Europe based. Uh, they, but they're basically a blog and they, they sort of made my article look like I looked like, look like it's not an interview, but it is, I don't know why that happened but um <laughs> like there's no question you know it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. they edit it in such a way that it looks like i wrote i wrote it which i did write some of it because i answered questions but uh yeah very interesting but 80 level is great i mean it's definitely something i've been following for a while um and they have a really huge following and community and they just they just show off really good stuff in regards to tools for making things in 3d or etc and yeah they they looking glass and an 80 level uh sort of got together and uh wanted me to do this interview about what the <laughs> what aphid through the looking glass is all about and what uh, what my uh what the process was like essentially when it came down to to making for it yeah making the content content itself so this is by Artie Burton, yes, and Jake, and they have a nice video here. Now they did a. Uh, this is the five minute one, right? Or is uh, this, this is a big one, but you don't have yeah. to. You can just kind of skip around so, it. So this um, is the whole. This video would show you basically the whole comic, as it looks there. Um, but can, we have, yeah. can, we have, can we see the comic at all? Can we have it all look at? Can we make this bigger? Let me see. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's it. There. there we go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll go back here a little ways and just. I oh. could even talk over it if you'd like. Yeah. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of the inspiration that that came out of this was mainly stemming from this sort of aggregation of. 
I don't know, being pulled from multiple sides, if you will, um, within within the world, especially around me at the time, but also just for a lot of people. I think a lot of people feel pulled from one side to the other, kind of polarized, uh, not knowing or not, not really feeling a, a sense of unity, right? Um, so a lot of that came, you know, that came the comic book kind of came to be in regards to the story. It stems from that sort of feeling, um, but mm. also the feeling of not, not quite being at home or not knowing what home is. So a lot of the, a lot of the the not only the imagery, the symbolism, but a lot of the the aesthetic choices or juxtapositions have to do with this sort of red and blue uh, coming together into Violet. Uh, the main character's name is Violet as well. And thank you, Arturo, for uh, making this this uh, film. Pretty pretty awesome. Arturo's the sort of community videographer guy over at Looking Glass. Um, oh, so cool. shout out to him for this. Um, the main premise of of going that route with the story was more or less a choice based on my own situation at the time which was and the story was rewritten like a hundred times by the way it was insane <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't believe how many times i was like yeah no this doesn't work uh i need to change this or i need to rewrite yeah and this. i still yeah. don't even know if it's any good i have no idea <laughs> no i don't even know i have no idea it could be it could be complete crap um, but but I know how to do visuals very well, so I made sure to sort of take advantage of that. Um, and you know, right here as we're navigating through this section here, um, yeah, it, I mean, there's some uh, personal uh, aspects to it, uh, and that in this case deal with the sort of main character's subconscious or what have you. But a lot of that red and blue is definitely just to kind of symbolize like this sort of uh, degradation of, of unity and this sort of splitting of, you know, not not feeling at home, not knowing where your place is, et cetera. Yeah, like where you belong or something. Where you belong, right? What mm -hmm. is home, et cetera. And this sort of Violet, the orphan, uh, kind of traverses this this uh, this city, so to speak. Um, and in this case, she's now in a nightmare. Um, and we're, we're sort of going through and interacting with some past memories she has um, of her parents, et cetera. Uh, but a lot of, a lot of that ooh, sort of disparate, and juxtaposed imagery and all that also tie into uh, just holography itself, um, red and blue, right? Uh, yeah. Being uh, just like those those glasses. The old three D. The old three D glasses. Exactly. Yeah, 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 so a little yeah, bit yeah. of scary stereoscopic uh, um, uh, uh, little hint there. Are there audio effects, Jake, in this? Are there audio? Is there audio? Yeah, yeah. Dylan oh. Robinson uh, from Canada. And some of it I made myself, but Dylan Robinson did some. Uh, Simon uh, also did some. Simon Howard over in Ireland. Um, he did some. And Neovi Kitsu of Greece. But she's now living in Germany. Um, she is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, when you watch this and you're not of complete sound mind, it is amazing. Um, <laughs> it's very Imagine. fun in person. I'm going to tell you that right now. So, uh, you know, cool. you ask if it's worth it to buy, and I'll say yes because of that. <laughs> uh, please have as much fun as possible when viewing this. Uh, that, that's how I would, uh, would go about it. Um, but also good and evil, right? There's a juxtaposition of yeah. good and evil here. Um, the, the left and the right and this sort of uh, all sort of culminating from that nightmare and then back into morning uh, where this cat pops into play uh, and uh, and uh, she finds some peace in that cat and etc. cetera. Um, one takeaway from the comic in particular that 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 I, I I discovered 
sort of sort of later later on actually during the process because originally when i was doing this uh making my first hollow comic which was back in 2018 2019 the I had already been thinking about this, but it didn't really enter into my mind until I started working on on this particular hollow comic, which is all, uh, and that being sfumato, which is like this 550 year old painting technique, uh, sort of founded, at least it's theorized by Da Vinci and, and others at the time, Da Vinci being more of the father of it. Uh, with, I mean, you can look at Mona Lisa, right? and having different textures different blurring of the lines or edges in a painting based on depth you have a background being most sort of blurred out if you will less resolute uh, the middle ground being a halfway point and then the sharpest up front and then maybe if you have uh you know even more stuff or objects and in, in front of that foreground, then, you know, that would be a little blurred as well. Sfumato is all about trying to mimic how the eye sees. So you create yeah. your content, your painting, whatever it is, based around the idea of mimicking how your eyes actually see. If that and makes Jake, sense. Yeah. And Jake did, did you know that, so uh, you might know this, but uh, yeah. um, um, Da Vinci with the Mona Lisa, he also uh, painted her so that she ages as you move your eyes from left to right. <laughs> she, she does. She gets older. She's older on the right-hand side of the painting than she is on the left. Honestly, that. yeah, that might be so. Uh, there, there, there are, yeah, I mean, there, there's like, uh, there's some strange distortion techniques that you could yeah. use. I remember seeing it in person and I've, I've never looked at it with that in mind. I'm trying to, I'm trying to relook at it now. Cause that is. Well, he, he did the things that you've just said. So, so the, the, this, the, the backgrounds are distorted. So, so the left and the right one appears higher than, than the right, but he also ages it as you move across the painting. Ah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Kind of fascinating, you know, also in relationship to this sort of left and right motion of this GIF right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and these are interactive, by the way. So you can you can kind of uh, if you go to the site, you can interact with them with your mouse or with your with your phone, etc. Uh, accelerometer on your phone. Um, oh, that's cool. Oh, cool. That's neat. Ooh, the looking glass. Yeah, and that'll and, go uh, right into the display if you if you wanted to. And a lot of this, I mean, all of this is your artwork, right? You so you wrote it. Yeah. You you basically it, essentially you've written this thing. You've done the artistry for it, the and you've programmed it as well, right? Yeah, yeah. You've it got took a, a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's not like just drawing it and scanning in images. You got to actually program the way everything interacts and moves, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the animation is done with the uh, Unity game engine, um, but also there's there are animations that occur uh, that are more sprite sheet based, which means uh, there are some two D animations that were created outside of the Unity game engine uh before going into it and then uh basically i made a gif right of a 2d item and then it uh went ahead and uh, i went ahead and put it in there as a sprite sheet which is like all the different frames that make up the gif right and it yeah and then and then you just have a nice little 2d animation you can kind of put wherever you want etc that's on a loop oh this was one of the things i liked Oh yeah, <laughs> my uh, yeah, my super villain uh, sketchbook 
Yeah, uh, like <laughs> process. Well, I, well, that's not concerning at all. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Not at like, all. like <laughs> if you can, fine, if you right? can somehow follow this, this is right. his thought process for putting it together. Like, you know, I'm gonna have this move into that, and then this is gonna move into that, and then this is gonna move into that image. Then we're gonna follow this arrow down here across the page, all the way down to this oh, little yeah. block where I'm gonna add this. In, you know, can someone, can someone check the FBI's most. <laughs> We vetted this man. Yeah. yeah. And we, jeez, we were yeah, we'll have to, uh, Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot more, too. There's only a couple pages. So I... Yeah. Yeah. My Lord. My Lord. <laughs> they, um, I just made me wonder how you can follow this. You know what I mean? But it's. Oh, it's, it's, it's all in there. In yeah. My, uh, <laughs> my brains. But I also have the colors. I mean, I have color uh, keys as well. Like uh, animation would be green, dialogue red, uh, things like that. Captions are orange. Um, yeah, I have a lot of rules, little design rules in place that, that I followed. Uh, unfortunately, I also changed those rules sometimes. So <laughs> that, that did make it a little confusing, but... Oh, I always knew where things were eventually. Yeah. Uh, God complex as well. He's got a God complex. Oh, well. yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the problem is is that I'm inherently making another world, so it's like I almost have to have the God complex, yeah. right, to make it. Like, I kind of have to. Otherwise, what am I going to, like, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> yeah. Right, we'll let you off that one, man. We'll let you off that one. You gotta have the god complex, yeah. Uh, otherwise, you know, I'm not creating anything. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's cool because it's um, you're also breaking free of some of the traditional comic, um, you know, like the when you have a comic as a page in front of you, it's yeah. kind of like you're moving panel by panel. Even if yeah. they do have splash pages or the panels sort of overlap each other and they make new and strange ways of sort of bringing that comic together, it's still, you're sort of reading left to right, top to bottom. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. what you can do with it with digital, I mean, both, I really in both mediums, I mean, just like a flat digital display or even in this, in this uh, holographic world is create a comic book that is, still a comic with comic bubbles and things to read and interact with and have the artwork there, but also um, make it move in a dynamic way. That's the medium's never seen before, you know, because sure. I mean? we're, because we've always been stuck with pieces of paper. And then like, like, like rum was saying, you've got all this, you can add sound and other things to it. Mm -hmm. So it can be a true, um, like a new, form of media in a sense you know really oh yeah yeah and it, and, it, and it is um and it it is and it's like this um the, the one thing that uh i mean that that's actually kind of got me started into it is you know what happens to diegetic space uh when you know which is like this space between panels um you know when you're reading a comic book you're sort of filling in the gaps of the action right the gaps of the sounds that you might hear the gaps of the visuals etc um and and in that diegetic or gutter space there's this phenomenon that happens in, happens within all of us but what happens to that when when is there extra diegetic space is what I'm saying. If you, if I'm already providing sound and providing uh, th this, um, this sort of a, a sequence of, of animations and the like that perhaps otherwise your imagination would have filled in, perhaps maybe you're making even more, right? Even more uh, movements in your mind to fill in uh, gaps that, that animation or that sound did it fill in um if sure. that makes sense so it really kind of be goes from diegetic to extra diegetic just because of that uh and that that that's kind of what i really wanted to hone in on with with this one especially it looks amazing uh jake the snake any any uh any though any reticence though about uh going digital i know I, I should imagine if you're in the you're involved in the comic book comic book world, lots of comic book people are 
nostalgic and collect oh my god i know well that's so that's kind of the yeah (laughs) that's kind of the uh that's kind of also another facet of why i got into this in particular mainly due to the fact that i'm you know we're we're all on these freaking screens all the time Uh, it's really it's basically just a series of different slot machines that we're going through on our you know apps are all just slot machines I mean, look at how they're designed, right? You read an article, it's literally like, psh, 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 you know, yeah. spinning wheel, whatever <laughs> slot machine. <laughs> uh, but, uh, or even, you know, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera. Uh, with, with this, you're not going to get the amazing, luscious, beautiful smell of a comic book, uh, you know, that we all love, right? Uh, at least that I love that. Uh, I don't know about uh, Dark We Can 81 here. Do you like the smell of comic books? Oh, yes. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> White Shadow, do you like the smell of comic books? No, oh, he's, he's a sniffer. He is. Oh, we yeah. can't hear White Shadow. That's okay. He's a proper it's usually sniffer. what happens with me. I mute every time. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> you know? You no, still yes, have the purple do. background, so yes, I forgive. Yes, yes, Thank yeah. you, thank you. But yeah, thank the, you. Yeah, the the that 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 nostalgia, like uh, you know, salacious rum over here is 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 talking about is that's real. That's something that I want to try to maintain somehow. I don't know how. Sometime in the future, there'll yeah. be a little a little tiny perfume. Oh yeah, a little tiny, it. yeah, a little tiny uh, uh, puffers. Yeah, and, <laughs> and when you when you hit the right page, it'll blast out that that, oh, that, yeah. that old comic book's page smell. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I actually purchased a little spray the other day. Uh, that was it's literally called paper, and it actually smells like paper. So now mm. what I've done in order to, uh, you know, feel extremely comfortable before I sleep. I just spray some of this paper perfume on my bed. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, you should all get this thing. It's unbelievable. Um, it's and it's real. Do uh, they have but, old Kenner Star Wars figure smell? Yeah, oh, exactly. they should yeah. do that. <laughs> There's Plastic. nothing like cracking open an old Kenner Star Wars figure and having <laughs> That that initial yeah. smell of the old plastic, you know. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, yeah, that's gnarly. <laughs> you gotta sniff your toys. You gotta sniff your toys. You yeah, you gotta sniff the toys. Uh but but yeah, that, that's that's the whole uh, you know, I wanted to bring you know, I didn't want to just make the typical digital comic book that's on an iPad or what have you, because I wanted to bring, I wanted to see what would happen if I brought comics, uh, comic characters, the dialogue itself, the and uh, in this case animation and sound. What happens when I bring all of those facets of a comic book into our spatial temporal existence, right? Uh, yeah. And the you know a lot of things will change with the not only the that diegetic space i was talking about but with you know with pacing and rhythm uh that changes the sort of flow state design meaning like i want my people to really get honed into this thing i want them to get into the the zone or the flow if you will just like you would with a real comic book Mm -hmm. uh, or doing something you love right uh, and that that that's the main that was the main uh, one of the main avenues I wanted to approach the hollow comic from was just experiment with this and I definitely refined it with this iteration. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely happy with it uh, at least for now. <laughs> it might change later. But. Something that popped out to me was I w- I was kind of like if you. Uh, if this technology and this kind of thing like takes off, I was like, it seems like the perfect avenue, the perfect environment for like a, a Spider-Man multiverse. You know that cartoon, mm-hmm. the multiverse Spider-Man? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, like was, that seems like it would yeah. fit right into this. Really lovely too, universe, what they did you know? with those, those, those graphics are fantastic. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. yeah. Really good. You could, you could also do, uh, when I was watching your little uh, uh, video there, uh, the hologram. I was, uh, and and you were talking about your uh, various mental 
the states. <laughs> I was actually thinking. Imagine if you imagine you could do a Salvador Dali exhibition. Can you imagine doing the persistence of memories on that? Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, you know, that'd what's crazy, funny, I'm, that'd be crazy. I'm actually. I, because I'm done with the commission, I started uh, uh, getting back into oil painting, and I'm, I'm reproducing another Dali because I did one oh, once. Which one? Which one? Uh, the one I'm doing. Well, the name escapes me. That's kind of messed up. Well, I just name really name the there. thing. Is it, is, it, is it a big elephant with the long legs, or is it a clock? No, not or, that one. No. I, I I know him by the I know him by the pictures. So. Yeah, no, I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll have to send it along, but it's it's. Yeah. It's it's gonna be fun. It's I've just loved. I think I just went right into it and I didn't even bother looking because I just ne I needed to paint again. Like I like I the melting. I like the melting clocks, Jake the Snake. Those are good. Yeah. Yes. Are good. <laughs> um, Jake, is there any of our your paintings online that we can look at? Oh yeah, yeah. You could uh, you could go to my sort of personal website. Uh, I also have some illustration work on that Valhalla site. If oh, you don't want to oh. confuse everybody. Uh, they can go to valhalla.com. We'll, go we'll go to both real quick. Yeah, and, and, we want to look at, yeah, want to look you at your art. We want to look at your art. Yeah, we want to see your art. Yeah. Valhalla is my art. Uh, yeah. and the other art is also my art. Yeah, look look them in there. But yeah, jakeadamsart.com uh, would be the sort of personal art studio website, et cetera. Cool. We'll pull up. Um, so we'll pull up this your Valhalla yeah. first here. We'll take a look at you your. Got, you got you got any monkey lizard paintings? Oh, well, I love monkey lizards. Not yet, I guess. We'll have to. He'll have to. Do, <laughs> he'll have to get right on that, right? Well, I mean, I probably do at least have a drawing of a monkey lizard. I really oh. like that those dark crystal creatures. Oh yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. Kind of, they're, like they're kind of like monkey lizards. Oh, look at that! Yeah, oh, that's three D. Rendering very erotic 3D rendering I did a yeah. while back. <laughs> uh, no, look at that. I know, I know, I know. I'm thinking. So, so uh, but yeah, the, no one else. The, no one else is. Yeah. <laughs> it's only the, you. The illustration stuff is uh, down a bit. Uh, there's the hollow comic, and then if you go down further, you should get to. Some comic book. That, that joy, that joy yeah. reminds me of uh, techno noir. It, yeah, yeah very yeah. much. Uh, oh, I love me some of that. Craft works. A little dark wave, but yeah, to the right would be the uh, at this point would be where you'd like uh, that'd be something uh, I did for a, a comic back in twenty. Hmm, geez, I don't even know when I made that. I don't know, it was a while ago. Wow, that's very detailed. You can click that's on it. Cool. Oh, this yeah. here one. Yeah, you can if you wanted to, and then you can just kind of scroll through some of the pages. I don't think they're all on there, but you know some of them are, and that's sort of the the first page, uh, something like that. This was actually a combination of like uh, me drawing and then doing cutout collage as well, and then photographing. It was actually kind of kind of a fun process. Um, wow. A lot. It's all hand drawn, and then there's some digital, just a kind of digital veil behind, you know, the drawing. Yeah. Hmm. A lot of my different styles kind of coalescing here, but yeah. So you're a, you're an artist, a writer, and a programmer. Some sometimes in the comic world, people stick to stick to a discipline, but you're you you you're, you. Do you know what I mean? Like there's a colorist. Yeah. Well. Color. You, the, you seem to do, you, you, the comic book industry uh, is it's hard to I mean I would love to just paint or just draw or illustrate right but the problem is is that I, I just wasn't satisfied with how things were evolving and I got too curious <laughs> so, um, so I ended up uh, learning new skills and applying them a bit too quick maybe uh, but I love what I do. I, I kind of see creativity in many, many, many disciplines. Um, and I also just see it as one discipline. Um, all of it is just one thing to me. Um, it's all just a push and pull, really, uh, like many things. But, uh, yeah, you're, hard to balance sometimes, that's for sure, especially inside my brain. 
Uh, are you a William Blake fan, uh, Mr. J? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a good, fine Englishman. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember this one. This was an installation, wasn't it, on the wall? Oh, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Jeez, uh, I don't even know. 20. Oh, it was like five. All different faces that you did, yeah. It was some face. It was when I was young, and I didn't really. I, I guess it was kind of like one of my first conceptual pieces if you will so it's a little corny but it's pretty good oh, no. uh, it's come fun. on jake it's good <laughs> <laughs> I have fun with it. <clears throat> tooth and a radiator yeah tooth and a radiator. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense makes sense a bunch of wooden blocks but yeah, you know, a lot, a lot of what, a lot of this sort of traditional oil painting definitely made its way into, into the, the most recent comic book though. So, uh, especially some of the creepier aspects of it, perhaps not yeah. the hyper realistic aspects, but at least some of the, some of the sort of minimal creep that happens. Um, at least do, I, do you I have hope. plans to, uh, to uh, do a second? Oh, uh, second comic or? Yeah, um, I also What's have that? some other plans I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about uh, making a platform so that other people can make them as well. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be that cool. would be good because then I wouldn't yeah. have to make as many. Uh, uh, I could take my time on what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Some other. Yeah. Cool and I could also support artists somehow, you know, or at least show yeah. their work, right? Uh, which is what 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 they all deserve. Uh, so, and the issue is just getting. It's such a niche market or thing that I'm mm -hmm. that I'm I've done. Like I, nobody knows what the hell. Like they see the video, they don't know what the heck I'm. <laughs> what the heck yeah. this thing is? They're just like, oh yeah, cool, okay, uh, scroll through it, um, and that's. You know, whatever. Uh, I think that it's 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 just culminating and it's it, it is evolving and people are getting used to it. Uh, yeah, it's just going to take time. Well, and, and it's one of those things where I think the more the like you said, if you can get if you can make a platform that makes it a little bit easier for a developer to put to develop and make their own comic, and yeah. you get more and more people doing it, yeah. you know, it yeah. would just bring, you know as each person comes with something different to the table, a different genre, a different story, different ideas, you're going to get people from all different walks of life who are going to come into it. Oh, and yeah. then they'll be checking out what came before, you know what yeah. I mean? And mm -hmm. it'll expand not just naturally as you get more people developing things, you know? Well, when I was talking to Michael Allred on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, briefly. Um, about putting Madman in. Uh, and maybe doing a little bit of Madman, uh, that'd be pretty sweet uh, yeah. in the in the holographic display. I don't know. I don't know if he would be into it. Uh, I mean, he he acted like he was, but <laughs> nothing is like has been official yet. Uh, I'd love yeah, to yeah. get his opinion. <laughs> um, so I'll be working on that conversation a little bit more. Um, but at least you got him cool. to follow you. That's the that's the ticket. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, we got him. But uh, but yeah, it's, uh, and so far he seems like such a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I love his work, uh, and and a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of his work inspires me. But also people like Chris Ware inspires me. Uh, obviously Scott McCloud, and then um, I mean I love Grant Morrison without without a doubt. Uh, uh, but. But yeah, uh, I think what inspired what I did for the Hollow comic definitely came more from people like Scott McCloud. Uh, I don't know if you know Nick Susani, um, and uh, also um, well, somebody I just mentioned and my mind just drew a blank. Uh, but yeah, the, those are the type of Chris Ware, uh, especially like building stories. If you've ever seen building stories, that comic in particular the way that he combines panels with rooms inside buildings uh, i just yeah it blows your mind I, I love how 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 he's putting that together visually uh while also just like maintaining different stories within one right because that's what happens in a building <laughs> but it's also like a building if you 
create a section of a building. Now you have comic book panels. <laughs> there you <laughs> you go. Think yeah. about it. Yeah. And you're just watching the people inside, you know. Um, uh, that's that's that was really fun to me, and and I, I wanted to incorporate that as much as I could. I think I did. I think I did. It, and uh, it, the looking glass display really, really uh, is like tailored for that type of work too, which is cool to see. Jake, your artwork is just. Um you've got so many different facets to what you do. And I think all of it is, you show a really good talent for the, for the medium. I think that um, you don't see that often. I mean, I think you're a really good painter. You're a really good illustrator. And uh, I'm, I'm just always impressed with all the stuff you see. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but a lot of that imagery was just very impressive, you know? Oh yeah. Thank yeah, you. yeah very much. So very much. So. Well, That's very cool. Thank very you talented. very much. And I was thinking, um, did you mention him, Dave McKeon? Oh yeah, oh I love yeah. Dave McKeon. Yeah. yeah, 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 amazing. Yeah, that I mean, as far as it, yeah, that too, I suppose, if you think about it, because it, a lot of that kind of creepy stuff definitely relates to some of that. <laughs> uh, those covers are great, um, especially well, pretty much everything. Greedo and Speedo's hey, here too. Hey, Greedo. 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 Yes. Greedo in a speedo. <laughs> oh, I'll get you that link for that paper cologne, girl. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> it's definitely amazing. Um, they also have a book perfume. It's, it's so you got the book and just the paper. <laughs> cool. Nice. So you you can choose from whole to segment, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In uh in Kowak, uh you can actually buy uh um uh, bottles of my pheromones. Uh, oh, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah oh, then you if, can uh, attract all the lady creatures. Yeah, honestly, a couple of dabs of that, Jake, and they'll be you, you'll have a harem in no time. Oh, well, maybe I'll get Samantha, my own please. blobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Blobby yeah. will come over and hang out then. Yeah, a little blobby sidekick as well. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Lobby's <laughs> infesting the entire internet now. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting too I many. Think, uh, <laughs> I think Rum's brought all the all the blobbies. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah, we're well, about finding yeah, one. Oh, we've got loads of blobbies in there. It's cornered well, the market. <laughs> Why well, is this so, sal salacious rum? You have a PO box. Can I send you letters? Yes, please send me stuff. Oh, I want to send you. <laughs> I I open it on on YouTube and I'll I'll show it off and <laughs> you send me love letter. You can send me a love letter or well, just a letter or just a I letter. I need that. I need the pheromones before I get those feelings though of love. If you, you know? send me something, I'll send you a salacious from swag bag. In that you... would be nice. Yes, <laughs> stickers and magnets. I need that in my life. That would be perfect. There you go. <laughs> so Bazar, you got any questions for Jake? I, I know you've been kind of mm -hmm. taking it all in here. Yeah. No, I'm just hopefully this technology does well because there's one character we'd love to see in like a holographic style. Oh all yeah, right. which all one? right, keep it in your pants. Oh, I wonder who that is. Yeah. <laughs> wonder who that is. <laughs> uh oh. No, I would love to see like a, a Harley Quinn kind of story with a Joker kind oh, of yeah. thing. Oh, I just, got you. Like yeah. a holographic or a 3D style, I think it'd be a sure. Be yeah, really and, yeah, that would be beautiful. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. and honestly, I haven't done a 3D rendering of a female in quite some time, so I think it's time. I think it's time for me to do that. And Harley Quinn's a good place to, uh, to do <laughs> yeah. some revamping Can on that. Never go wrong scope. there. <laughs> no, it's there. lovely. And it just, I love the Joker, so like it's, it's yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. Unbelievable. He also your, seems yeah. like he could fit into that holographic world of crazy. Oh, could sure. you imagine the, all the ha 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 is kind of popping out at you? And oh, yeah. Them, yeah, I, I you tried know? to emulate that a little bit in part of the comic book, uh, but instead, yeah, but it, I didn't do as much as I really wanted to. And obviously, it wasn't Joker themed, so I couldn't yeah. really go all yeah. out. <laughs> but, but I did do a little bit of that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, that, yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. But, you know, we got to get the publishing companies on board. That's actually part of the problem. It's like, I'd love to do all these, have the opportunity to make all these characters and the like. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. 
getting well, a hold of these Jake, companies is Jake, they're, they're on to us they're on to <laughs> us Jake. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah i hope they are <laughs> yeah i want to make um, these things help me my out. uncle my uncle paul is jake's father so yes jake is my cousin. oh yeah yeah john is <laughs> my cousin <laughs> mm. We're sorry, by the way, Jake. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we feel for you, man. These we feel guys for love you, me, Jake. <laughs> See how much my friends love me. Oh, uh, that's nice. Uh, are you able to? Are you? Uh, are you able to tell which one he is, Jake? Oh, I don't know. know Many a clone. Well, you know, we, we know <laughs> we, 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 we've worked out. He's he's John's a clone. We, we think that oh. we think there's we think there's thirty two of them. We've we, we think we've. <laughs> Kind of all Why stupid. not the holy number thirty three? You know, it's yeah, yeah. thirty two. Like, why? Why thirty two? Well, we just know oh, thirty two variants. Yeah. Oh, like, pervy, oh. pervy one, like extra, extra pervy one. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. they're, all, they're all slightly different. <laughs> no, like uh, I want to see like a graph of all that. Yeah, it's like a chart oh, my of Lord. different symbols. <laughs> Yeah. It would be just as crazy simple. and convoluted as your documentation was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. The creepy oh John, Lord. the pervy yeah. John. The scientific <laughs> John, the Sasquatch John. We managed to get one of them. Oh, yeah, look captured at that. one of them. That's oh, John like right there. One, yeah. That's a good look. <laughs> yeah. It says that's me as an action figure. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's. I, about I, I, I guess who guess who else has got one? Well, oh, oh, got one. Here it comes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah! Oh, that's, 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 that's lovely. That's that mustache. Um, the mustache on both of them is phenomenal. Oh my lord! Crazy. This is good. I saw it, John. That was delicious. His fault. I seen that. Like, I seen that on Saturday, and I had to pick up. <laughs> well, I want one now. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I gotta find one. <laughs> well, if I see any Johns out there, I'll send them your way, Salacious Rum. You can form another connection. Be careful. Be careful. Like they, they like. Well, just let's just say bodies and bushes spring to mind. <laughs> He caught yeah, me. Boy. He caught me one day. So I'm in Red Dead Redemption, Jake. Oh you know yeah. Game? yeah. And I was. And when you're out in the wilds of Red Dead Redemption, occasionally some guy will walk by in a horse on a horse. Okay. And yeah. If you if you shoot the guy, and take sometimes you can pick his pockets. You'll get gold teeth and gold bars and lovely, gold jewelry, lovely. and they're worth thousands of dollars when you sell it at the store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, or his horse might have fur furs and. And skins on it that are worth something for your skinning trade, right? Uh, wasn't really like so, that. so, but but if you if you leave the body right there in the in the in the road where he was walking, yeah, yeah. the police will come by and start harassing you. But if you pick up, if you pick, I found out that if you pick up the body and take it over to the bushes, <laughs> and hide in the bushes, then the police don't find it and you don't get in trouble. In the yeah, game. It's, it's, actually, it's, actually, it's actually worse than that, Jake. We're in a, we're in a posse, like, riding through the West. Oh, John just disappears off the back. So you don't know where he always... Oh, John keeps disappearing. And I, 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 happened, I happened to stand still one time when the posse left. John didn't know I was there. He goes <laughs> off on side missions killing women. He does, like, 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 he does. He goes off on his own little side missions, murdering, <laughs> pillaging, and hiding him in bushes. John is a saint. He's bringing back <laughs> brigandage. He's bringing back brigandage. <laughs> yeah. All I was, a, I was, a, I was secretly a Western Viking. Ooh, yeah. Well, that's that's a good look, though. Yeah. That's one of the that's one of the John one of action the figures, I would imagine. Skinned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So uh so yeah, Jake, what are your future plans with um both with the hollow comics and everything? Like you said, do you, you do kind of want to do some kind of sequel and um maybe make some kind of platform for other people to be able to develop on it? Yeah, eventually I'd like to have something called hollow comics with an x um just because and uh yeah but but just so that people can upload their own work um especially the japanese market i think there's a lot oh of, yeah 
I think a lot of, uh, I mean, they have, they have a pretty big Japanese following uh, community through Looking Glass. And I, I've yet to see, I've, I've seen some animations and that, that last a little bit of time, but they're not, nothing that's kind of, mon I mean, it is anime, right? But it's not, uh, th there's no, it's not like a, in, in visual novel form, I guess I should say. So um, I would love to see some, some people make that. That'd be really cool. Cause that's sort of a different dynamic when it comes to visual storytelling. Uh, it's a little bit, there's a little bit more action than words, uh, so to speak. Gotcha. But definitely a challenge making this thing because you know you have to figure out a way to 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 make these the dialogue and everything else sort of work within just that space, uh, and you can't overlap. Yeah. You can overlap panels, obviously, but uh, as I did, but you have to layer it in 3D space, which you know is a little bit different than than uh, than than just working with 2D. Mm -hmm. um, so lots of strange sort of challenges I had to face in that regard, but um, I think a lot of people can overcome those and just make some good stuff and we can put on a platform. So that that's what I really want to do. But I also want to make something for an, uh, an actual comic book publisher. Um, like Hellboy would be awesome. I would love to do a <laughs> Hellboy. I got to get a hold of, of Mignola. Um, yeah. But other than that, I, I just want to make, I want to make another one. So and white sh to answer white shadows question. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to make another one, but I, I do want it to be something that is supported by an actual comic book publisher before I proceed. Gotcha. Cause that, that, I think that would be, it would just be more fun to, to work with those writers instead of me writing it. And then I just do all the visuals. I think that would be really fun to, to kind of actually have a question for you. Yeah. It was just, you kind of kind of answered that. I was going to ask is that when you're thinking of a comic or mm -hmm. a story, how long does it take you to think to start it to finish it? Oh, yeah. How long would, how long would it actually take you to, to do a full comic from start to finish? Just just with the the writing of it, the script, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the so that's the part. I feel like that's the part that took the longest is the writing. Believe it or not, uh, there were a lot of hiccups with the programming and, and this and that but all in all the the visuals the animation I, I'm I'm very good with with all that stuff and the programming um, and and I do teach a sort of interactive writing course here at Rochester Institute of Technology but so I am I, I am decent at writing but I more so know the tools that a good writer would use. Like I, I don't see myself as like this amazing writer, right? So I had to really, I had to really get into it, uh, and and, and try to, and, ch and it was a huge challenge for myself to to uh, to take on as far as the writing was concerned. And I, like I said, I rewrote that thing a hundred times, so it was, <laughs> it was uh, definitely the most time consuming. So to answer the question about time, it, it's really like probably about, I mean, it was two plus years to make this one, but obviously the pipeline has been sort of fleshed out. Um, if someone else were to write it and, and the writing was just like on point, uh, pretty much for the most part from the start, I could see something coming out, you know, maybe every six months or something. And if I had uh, a team of people for 3D stuff, <laughs> animation stuff, maybe every couple months, right? Um, yeah that sort of thing because i got the workflow and the sort of 3d pipeline and all the all that down that was really the challenge was working out how could this be sort of registered into a workflow uh for future iterations right and that 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 that's been fleshed out but that's probably why it, it, it the writing plus that workflow uh sort of thought process that that's probably what took so long this time around yeah oh in addition to many other challenges like finding a an actual home while writing 
a story <laughs> about finding home. <laughs> I was in a freaking twilight zone uh, this entire time. Um, it's very meta in that regard. You know, I was really searching for for my own feeling of home while I was making this this hollow comic that literally was talking about um, that. Uh, and then in addition, I was shopping for an actual house. <laughs> so yeah. it's just like a lot of meta structures combined. <laughs> Huge Twilight Zone moment for two years. Uh, very strange. Um, well, speaking of writing, the other half of it is actually reading it. And apparently we have a question for Jake because we have a friend here named Dino that struggles with the correct way to actually read the comic. <laughs> Do you have advice for him on reading comics? Just then, to read comics in general? And then Dino's exclaiming. <laughs> he, he's driving and listening. Okay. This is great. I love it. Yeah. I would say I'll give you some advice for reading comics. First, you know, you get, uh, you know, I, I like scotch. Maybe you get some scotch. If you don't want that, maybe a nice cup of tea. Right. And sit down. And don't stop until the comic is done, you know, unless, you know, unless there's some chapters involved, maybe you got, you know, uh, you know, some, uh, some chapters you can flip uh, stop at and pause, but you know, you got to embrace the whole thing at once. You got to just gobble it right up. You know, it's like a, it's like a fancy dessert. That's what a comic book is. So yeah. you just gotta, yeah, you gotta embrace that, that, uh, sweet and savory experience. <laughs> Speaking of, like we know Bazar's favorite. What is what what kind of characters do you gravitate towards? What do you you mentioned like Mike Allred and Madman and you've mentioned Hellboy? Like what oh yeah, what are some of your favorite comics these days of the I'd you know? say my favorite comic, uh I should have it right up there. Oh yeah, Meta Baron. Yeah, I mean Meta Baron's definitely one of my favorites. Um yeah. I mean I, I love Mobius, um yep. Jodorowsky. Love Jodorowsky. Amazing stuff. So Meta Baron is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, also, like, I uh, can't remember who who did it. Uh, well, I think Sinkovich did the covers, but Electra Assassin. I mean, I, I've always really loved that series. Um, and recently, I've been gravitating towards a lot of independent stuff. I've just been getting, yeah. like, mystery mail from Desert Island Comics or whatever. And uh, that's been great. Uh, uh, really weird stuff. <laughs> just get like weird posters and uh, yeah, random people stuff that is off the wall, strange and makes absolutely no sense. But so that's been entertaining. But for the most part, Jodorowsky, Mobius, love those, uh, those, those two in particular. So, gotcha. Oh, yeah. Do you do you tend to follow like writers and artists a little bit more than following like a comic or character? Oh, well, as far as a character goes, um, I say I would, as far as following characters, um, I mean, I'm obsessed with Doom Patrol uh, and, and you know, the, the Suicide Squad in like the 90s. Yeah. Doom Patrol around the same time period, excuse me, um, obsessed. I mean, the, the, like, I just love that look and I love the... The whole team really so i yeah. don't really follow one character specifically if i had a character that i did follow in a more religious fashion i would say it's probably hellboy um and uh, i also well i'm in love with uh the specter as well so <laughs> yeah a <laughs> little bit of that <laughs> The Phantom, love the Phantom. I just really like the dark stuff, I guess. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but Meta Baron is amazing, so I, that that's definitely highly recommended by me. Cool, yeah. cool. Right. Any other questions, guys? Where's the snake? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nasty. No salacious rum getting nasty up in here no. i would uh well i don't think i should answer that that because i'll end up saying something uh you know uh, <laughs> yeah. he, he's hooked on jake the snake you were there <laughs> <laughs> we have this stupid... about, like the publishers that you'd like to get more 
and they're like, what, what is, what is the, the publisher that you want to work for more? Oh, I would, I, I think somebody that, that, that a publisher that I kind of click with would be perhaps, I mean, I love DC in general, but I mean, if I were to go independent, Fantagraphics would be fantastic. Oh yeah, they got some good stuff. I think I would click with them really well as far as, you know, what this current one's all about. Um, and then um, Dark Horse, I don't, I just don't see why you know they wouldn't want some characters in this thing so i would love to work with dark horse um but fanta graphics would be that would be awesome yeah, yeah. definitely fanta graphics yeah. is there anything else that you want to say that we didn't cover something we didn't touch on i think uh i think we did pretty good this was this was full-on enjoyment for me i had a great time i loved meeting <laughs> this strange creature with uh the <laughs> wife of uh oh mr blobby and uh and the hand that comes with it you know uh, maybe that salacious rum snake and then <laughs> uh bazos it was a pleasure uh and as always john a pleasure yeah Looks uh, like Chip had to leave us though, but that's yeah, I know. I, I really enjoyed having having Chip around as well. Yeah, it's just a great they're, group. They're asking about your little CRT monitor. It looks like oh yeah, I made a uh, I made a visual synthesizer out of a Raspberry <laughs> Pi, so you can uh, you can. It's pretty trippy actually. It hooks up to a webcam and it basically manipulates your face and echoes your body, <laughs> and you just become this big technicolored mess. Uh, but you can use the the synthesizer to adjust different. Uh, well, I have the oscillators hooked up to different visual parameters instead of sound parameters, and then it just makes all sorts of craziness. Wow. Um, but it's something fun for people who are bored and they come into my office, they can play with it. Um, <laughs> plus, I like the the little ring that happens, um, which I don't think I can hear anymore, which is concerning. I yeah, think I'm yeah. getting older. I've I've lost the ability to hear that 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 ring of the of the CRTs. Yeah, I think I'm getting older. You do. So. You, I think I think they say like a lot of people when they near or when they're near or hit thirty and beyond, they they lose that ability yeah. to hear the CRTs. The ring so, is gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the little noises that come out of the salacious rum too. It's amazing. It's beautiful. All right, monkey lizards. I'm gonna well, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna send something to P.O. box down there. I mean, I gotta get everybody I wanna send stuff to everybody. We'll give you some that'll be cool. Yeah, crazy. We'll, we'll yeah, have to send you some stuff. some super awesome stickers and stuff too. I gotta oh, get more. Oh, yeah. I gotta get more stickers and things made. So I, I owe a bunch of people some stickers. And I stuff. will do the guerrilla marketing for you, and I will paste them everywhere. So. <laughs> oh, Gilster's here too. Hey, Gilster. Hello, Gilster. Good you. Only you. Oh, thank you, Sam. Gilster. All right, Jake, I want to say thank you so much for popping by. I really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your creative mind with us. Hey, likewise. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's an honor. It's always good to delve into your crazy. Hey, <laughs> I, that's what I'm here for, you know, just get on in there and have fun. I, I have I have many things to, to have to ventilate, so it's good to do it with you all. Yeah. Um, it's definitely an it. it's definitely an Adams family. Uh, uh, right <laughs> oh, yeah. I always wanted well, to live in that house for some reason. I thought it'd be so cool to live there in that wild. I mean, the thing was alive, you know. Uh, that'd be so awesome. Where, where I grew up, you mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. For partly, yeah. I'm sure it was wild. <laughs> and yeah, it's you know, it's like yeah, it's they just had all these goofy. They just came up with the goofiest stuff for back then. That, it was like revolution. That creature living in the basement. I always yeah. loved that. <laughs> oh yeah, it's the best. The Adams family. Um, but yeah, in all seriousness, it was freaking great. I, I love being on here, and hope to hope to come back around sometime. Yeah. 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 
Beautiful. You're definitely welcome, Jake. You're you're actually, you know, I'm sure I speak for most of the guys in the community. You're probably welcome to come on anybody's show and chat and yeah. have fun, do whatever you want. Yeah. You know, oh, lovely. Yeah, I, I would think, love uh, it. I think the guys in this community would embrace your artwork, your your vision, and uh, your creativity. I, I mean, it's it's it, it always impresses me, and I'm sure everyone agrees. You know, oh, cool thank stuff. You. Cool Thank stuff. you. Cool. Yeah. Cool stuff. Baz, Rum, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Pleasure. And to Pleasure. everybody who joined us in the chat, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate thanks. you guys all there. Where are my super awesome stickers, John? I tell you, <laughs> I, I owe a lot of people stickers. Yeah. <laughs> they all want the stickers. Stickers where? <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Thanks a lot for staying with us we'll talk to you guys later thanks everyone never Bye. spit roast a monkey lizard <laughs> <laughs> stay awesome out there everybody bye bye